Welcome to Be Hero Fights. I'm Tom. And I'm Brian. And we are here to discuss... Or fuss. Over two hotly debated... De- <laughs> hotly debated, highly related topics, I guess. <laughs> it's a good thing that was the first time we've ever said these lines, ever. Yeah, <laughs> as if. Uh, but as you guys know, we try to do this uh, as honest as possible. So we'll have these problems every once in a while. That being said, welcome everybody. Uh, two B hero fights, and this week we are going to be doing something a little special. We're changing our format up a little bit. Now, don't worry, we're going to keep our debate format as it is normally, but we're not going to do that on every episode. We're going to try and switch it up a little bit. Uh, things that are stagnant die, and we don't want to be a YouTube channel or podcast that dies. So, with that being said, we're going to do this special episode as an interview episode, which we're going to try and do at least once or twice a month. Yep. Uh, on interviewing episodes. And we're going to be bringing in notable people to do the interview with uh, from all around the world. Anything that popular, anything that we can get a hold of. And that being said, as you guys know, we here in Salt Lake just had our fan X only a couple of months ago. So uh, we wanted to bring in a cosplayer. And then we've also been working with a lot of cosplayers through our Instagram. And before I go on, let's just go ahead and throw up the social media stuff. Yeah. Uh, so make sure you're following our social media, facebook.com slash be hero media, instagram.com slash be hero media on Twitter at be hero fight or be hero media, as well as everything that is be hero at be hero media.com. And then while you're here on YouTube, if you're so way you're watching it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. So, you know, when we come on with something new or one of our other great shows of be here. Exactly. But with that being said, so, uh, we can cut to the chase pretty quickly. We have a great first guest uh, who's a cosplayer, is uh, becoming pretty big in the cosplay community right now. So let's go ahead and bring her on. Yeah. Welcome, the lovely Avera. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm awesome. You know, I'm just chilling on a Sunday in my standard issue gaming girl chair and ears. That's right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You can't do Twitch as a female without said thing. So. Yeah, you really can't. They actually, when you become a when you become an affiliate, they send it to you in a box. It's cute. Yeah, oh, that's what I needed to do. I should have done that. Just that yeah. female the whole time. Yeah. We, now we know affiliateness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a mic to a mic to whisper in and lick. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, wow. Yes, <laughs> this has definitely taken a strange turn. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Oh, you yeah. You know yes, what I'm talking yes. about. Okay. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, Avera, uh, why don't you uh, tell our great fans here uh, where they can find you? Um, so, yeah. So, most of my content is usually uh, tutorial based and a lot of, um, you know, finished products. Um, and my big platforms are uh, TikTok and Instagram. And it's just Avera underscore cosplay at both those um i also do stream on twitch and i've been trying to get a bit more into that um mostly on the creative channel doing you know bills and stuff when i'm I'm working on tuesdays and thursdays um and then i am on you can find me on twitter and you can find me on facebook but i mean there's like two people who follow me <laughs> one of them's my mom <laughs> since there's not a lot going on out there so where would we be without our moms though right right <laughs> yeah, she's I mean, great she's i guess like, i don't know <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know who this is, but I think I, I this one might be my favorite. And I'm like, Mom, it's just like I'm in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's nobody. Yeah. It's it's me. This is comfort of it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, to be fair, has anybody else used Facebook anymore for anything outside of like family stuff? And yeah. of course, be just your arguing own. with family members about politics, pretty much at this oh, point. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the question. Yeah, uh, Tom, why don't you start us off? Yeah, so we'll just start simple. Uh, how long have you been doing cosplay? So I have been in it about five years. Um, I've been a longtime geek nerd. I've gone to like San Diego Comic Con. You know, I've I've really enjoyed the con scene and, and been just you know a long time Star Wars nerd and all that. Um, but I never really had the guts to cosplay. I didn't know how to get started i didn't know how to sew i didn't know how to make armor um and my son wanted to be a crying child from five nights at freddy's i didn't even know what that was 
I didn't even know he was playing that game at the time. Uh, <laughs> good parenting. Uh, so I was like, oh, uh, I'll be Cinderella, you know? And it was kind of one of those things where it's like the best experience. The community is great. I fell in love with the craft. Um, we started to make our own stuff. You know, things kind of went downhill really quick. We're doing full armor builds of like Junkrat and, and Overwatch characters within a year. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of how I got started and how long. Right on. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as some of our fans know, I was planning on doing a cosplay here at Fanex in Salt Lake. Sadly, money fell through, but I was going to do uh, an Indiana Jones cosplay. But I was going to do it in a specific way where I was going to have the whole get up as Indy, but gray my hair out a bit, have a big gray beard, and walk around with a walker so I could be Indy from the new movie. But <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> but nice. it didn't pan out, yeah. sadly. So uh, I do plan on doing cosplay, though. Yeah. Yeah, I believe in you. It is intimidating, but once you like get your first one out of the way, you walk on that con floor and people love you. I would recommend doing indie from the Temple of Doom because that is the best Indiana Jones. No, <laughs> I know. That it, why do people hate on that one so much, though? Like, I don't understand. I, you know, I, I actually kind of get it, though, because that one that one kind of takes the camp factor up right to my level of satisfaction. And uh, for those that know me, you know, I just love campy like B movies, horror so how many I, times I have you it. wanted to walk up to your boss and go num num shaba? Yes. <laughs> just exactly. like done like this. Well, our boss would probably <laughs> joke around with that too. We'd be like, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, Sometimes when I have too many energy drinks, I want to do that to myself. Uh, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but no, Last Crusade is the best one. I mean, Sean Connery is amazing. One of the best lines in the movie ever. You know, yeah, they're tied up in a chair together in that Nazi castle. As it goes and gets lit on fire, and Sean Connery looks over at Han- or uh, Harrison Ford goes, "The floor's on fire, I'm the chair." <laughs> right, watch out for those Nazi castles, right? right? You know, I mean the the Nazi bungalow and the Nazi flat they're not as they're not <laughs> as elaborate, but the Nazi castles are ridiculous. Yes, it's true. <laughs> All right, uh, gotta love Sean Connery though. May he rest in peace. Oh yeah. Um, but you know, kind of coming back to it though, I like, I, you know, I kind of like what you said about, you know, getting into it with your kids, you know, both of us are parents, my kids are much younger, seven and and three at the moment. And Mm -hmm. so, uh, but you know, they love Halloween and costumes and everything. And, uh, I don't know. I I just think that's really cool, you know, because I'm always trying to find ways to make sure that I can stay relevant and relate to my children. (laughs) Yeah. My girl is super happy with that stuff too. Sorry. Uh, they're, uh, they're going to be going as, uh, scary clowns this year. Uh, and, uh, The best part about this is, uh, one, well, this airs, this is already would have happened, but uh, my best friend is terrified of clowns, and so uh, they're going to uh, go scare the ever living crap out of them, but they want to go scare Uncle Jake, and so it's going to be fantastic. Uh, They're eight and five by this point, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, they're good shields, right? So it's like in the beginning when I was a little bit more nervous about being an older woman cosplaying and, you know, oh my God, people are going to make fun of me. I was kind of like, yeah, but I'm doing it for my kid. (laughs) You know, now my kid's 16. He's retired from it. I don't really have that shield. So I had another one. She's two. (laughs) So it's working out. But yeah, some one of my friends was like, hey, uh, can I borrow your daughter to be Georgie? Because I'm going to be it. And I'm like, uh, no, I gave birth to her. She's my prop. Okay. She's so <laughs> <Yeah>. hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, didn't, I didn't give birth to her for somebody else to use her. Yeah. Get out of here. The best reason for having kids right there is props for your cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. It's a lot more work than it's worth. Right. But. <laughs> Expensive prop. Uh, yeah. But eventually they help with the dishes, right? <laughs> They're kind of cute. So, yeah. 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 Uh, all right. So uh, before we jump into the next question, uh, I wanted to bring up, uh, if that's okay, some of the images uh, of your cosplays that we have. And I just want you to talk through them and tell us a little bit about them all. Uh, like maybe Sounds good. how long they took, difficulties of that, and stuff like that. One. I have all those stats completely memorized. I'm sure you do. Actually, no, you we really you do because when I do a lot of the the competitions, you do a lot of build books, mm-hmm. and so when you're doing that, you end up with like a stat list. <laughs> um, so this is Dragoon Mercy, which is a pretty hated skin in the Overwatch game for some reason. It was one of the anniversary edition skins. Yeah. Um, and people just hated it. 
Um, but I, it was one of my favorites and it wasn't getting cosplayed enough, I don't think, because it's a really high level of difficulty. And so I said, hey, why not? I'm just in quarantine. What else am I doing? <laughs> um, it took about $700. Um, most of that is because of the scales. It's like this like 2700 was when I stopped counting on the scales. Um, <clears throat> and they're all painted individually because I, I want to make them. I didn't want everything to look flat. So there's highlights and lowlights. And that's why they kind of look different colors but just like different shades um the helmet is 3d printed that's one of the, the few things there that's 3d printed everything else is foam staff moves so there's like a little motor in there that was my first time ever using a motor it was super wobbly <laughs> um, but somehow i muddled through megacon um that one got a judges award uh at megacon um but yeah the best part was lucy uh the character the voice actress for she's actually dragoon mercy's right behind me um but yeah the the overwatch voice actress loved it so we actually met and like messaged each other a couple times and i don't i mean that was just like an honor i felt like the costume got blessed there you <laughs> for go. sure yeah Oh, you've been sanctified now by Mercy. Yeah, it's like if you approve, then I'm good. Yeah, but she's five foot two. It's like she's tiny, and I'm a I'm a pretty big girl. I'm actually like five, you know, about the same di you know dimensions as the actual character Mercy. If you ever played the game, she's not the tiny. She's not Tracer. She's not tiny. Um, but when I was standing next to her, all of her like people were like, "Wow, is Mercy a tank?" No, <laughs> it's like, excuse me, I'm canon. She's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five nine. Okay, thank you. I, I don't know. So there was a couple of times during the meta of like Overwatch that Mercy could have been a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with like the Valkyrie was broken. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for a little while so there. Bad. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So we got the next one right here. Uh, this is this is one of my first major armor builds, um, and I'm actually pregnant in this photo. So the fun fact about this build was I won uh, Dragon Con Best Journeyman in it, and I was six months pregnant on stage. Jeez. So <laughs> that, that was beat. fun. <laughs> um, but this is a Zach Fisher design of Maleficent, and that's kind of how I stumbled onto him. And if you don't know who he is, he does a lot of the World of Warcraft original designs and re-imaging, re re reimagining. He works with Negri a lot, Jessica Negri. Uh, I was probably the most famous cosplayer out there, but uh, I just wanted to do an armored Maleficent because I couldn't sew. That's really how I, I stumbled onto this design, and it was a lot. Um, I probably want to say about 400 to 500 hours, and most of that was just messing stuff up because I had no idea what I was doing, but um, she's still pretty close to my heart. Um, she's also my favorite Disney character of all time, even way before Angelina Jolie. Like Growing up, I loved Maleficent because she was chaotic evil, and she just didn't care um yeah so uh yeah she's she's definitely a special one for me yeah it looks great too um my wife's one of her favorites of all time is maleficent um yeah so well, much she's... so if there's a maleficent something or other i have to buy it like we have like two yeah. maleficent warmers in our house there's like scent warmers now yeah that's awesome well i think i think we would get along <laughs> probably <laughs> one of the things i like about maleficent before they kind of redid it with angelina jolie like she really was one of the only uh Disney villains that were really was just evil incarnate, like yes, like Snow White. Yes. Um, you know the like. It, it, there's at least some rhyme or reason, some humanity. Like, you know the jealous uh, yep. stepmom or whatever. But like, no, Maleficent was evil incarnate. Yeah, um, which a I absolutely. I my God, I cannot. I love you. Like we are yeah. going to be best friends and do karate in the garage. Like yes. I always said, you know, yep. like one of uh, the, the motivations in Disney villains is either you know power or revenge. Right, uh, yeah. greed, revenge. Right, Jafar is greed. You know, Ursula's revenge. It's pr or jealousy. You know, they're really simple motivations. But mm. Maleficent really didn't have one. <laughs> yeah, she just kind of showed up and like cursed a baby. Yep. Um, yeah. and then when I saw the Ana Angelina Jolie version, I was like, Oh no, they just made her pissed off about her breakup. <laughs> yeah, I was like, What are they doing? Yeah, yeah. for sure. It, like, I don't. Know, I feel like the just the idea of evil incarnate like a i think it's good for children to learn that there is evil out there so like mm -hmm. I, and i think that's wildly underappreciated in this day and age um i feel like we we try too hard to make villains like relatable now um and i think that in its own right there is a, a a point there but also there is a time where no you just need to stay away from some certain things right yeah, yeah. I mean, or sometimes you might not know what their motivations are. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even know what they are. So you might you're never gonna you might not have that closure. And sometimes there's just things you should be afraid of. So yeah. 
you guys took a lot more out of that movie than I did. <laughs> like the only thing I, I, I Maleficent. I'm sorry. The only thing I took out of that movie was uh, three fairies who use magic their whole lives can't bake a cake. So <laughs> I know they're just such idiots. Which is an epic scene. That part should be true. They're useless. Right. <laughs> How do they raise a baby for 16 years? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So let's go take a look at the next one here. Oh, it looks like uh, there's another shot of that thing. Uh, one. Yeah. All right. Another one just hanging out in the woods, you know. <laughs> right. Typical day. Uh, plague. So this is, he's back there too. Uh, this is probably my favorite build. Um, this is another Zach Fisher. And if you don't know anything about him, I'm just going to say another thing. So back in 2018, before the pandemic, uh, he did a huge project called Project Evenblade, where he reimagined World of Warcraft characters as Death Knights. And pretty much every famous cosplayer on the planet uh, was involved in this project and took a character and built it. And they marched on BlizzCon. And it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, this is my favorite of the designs. It's Plaguebringer. It's kind of an original design. I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually exist. There is not the Plaguebringer is like a, a low level, like, you know, um, boss. And then you have like some NPCs that are called Plaguebringers, but I pretty sure this one was just something that him and a guy named Bjorn riffed on. Um, it has a cape of faces on the back, and that was kind of my favorite part because that's just awful and yeah. creepy. <laughs> um, but for the standpoint of it was a real big challenge to make it look – I didn't want to do a gender bend. I wanted to look like this dude. So there was a lot of challenges and proportions, um, a lot of details, a lot of new techniques, vacuum forming, you know. Um, and also I just feel like I really nailed the the – accuracy of the design um which sometimes i tend to go off the reservation but this one i feel like i, I could show it to somebody and be like look i think i did a good job on that one yeah. um it's award-winning it won best use of materials at dragon con this year um uh, friday night costuming contest and it was a finalist top five armor for blizzcon uh online so um it's retired it's back there um but yeah for sure i'm gonna actually bring it back out for holiday Montessori. um we're doing another project even blade march uh zach fisher is going to be there so we're we've got like 35 people who are going to be crunching out death knights and what uh says holiday and anime convention like death knights right yeah <laughs> but <laughs> i've got christmas ornaments that i'm going to fill with alcohol and i'm going to put it on the tree so I'll be giving that out. And that's yeah. festive. Well, now you're speaking our language. <laughs> right? Like, I was totally right. down with that. Like, yeah, that's a cool cosplay. Like, alcohol, like Christmas things? Yes. Let's do Both it. Let's like, perk no. up. <laughs> yes. It, I love when a plan comes together. Right? So. Yes. All down for that. Uh, yeah, well, we, we live here in Utah, and uh, alcohol is a premium. So, yeah. Midnight, right? Doesn't all the bars close at midnight? Uh, they close at two. Um, oh, nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, but right. it's like you have to get your alcohol. Like you can't go to Walmart to get your alcohol. Yeah. Um, right. Anything that's not like beer. You have to go to a special gotcha. liquor store that's ran by the state. Yeah. Last, gotcha. ca last calls at one. You can't buy beer after one either. Yeah. At like gas stations or anything. There's, there's all sorts I mean, of those, silly. Those, the days where I worry about that stuff, though, are long gone, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I have my maybe like Dragon Con and Holiday Montessori. Other than that, it's like on a regular yeah. weekend. But. 10, 10 p.m. Oh right. my! <laughs> right. My <Yeah>. word! <laughs> Better turn on Ancient Aliens. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Get to bed. <laughs> See, I told you I'm not the only one that falls asleep to Ancient Aliens. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, or Alaskan Triangle. Yeah. <laughs> Anything with the sk the Skinwalker Ranch is where I draw the line. <laughs> That's right here <laughs> in Utah. Just a bit, yeah. This is a bit too much. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this little next one here. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, my favorite <laughs> X Men character. <laughs> I love her. Uh, not in any of the movies. Uh, well, yes. You know, I like, you know, take Carol Danvers' powers and throw her off a bridge because <clears throat> that's where she belongs, kind of rogue. Uh, not a fan of Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, any kind of Carol Danvers, uh, just FYI. Yeah. But <laughs> it's nothing to do with the movies either. I mean, that was, you know, comic book. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so this is Storbot. Um, I didn't make anything here but the wig. Um, but... You know, my husband and I, at this point, we were still dating. We were actually met online. Uh, we met, we were both guild leaders <laughs> or guild officers for years and years and played online uh, together for, I don't know, five or six years. When we, uh, when I got divorced, he asked me out and I was like, oh, are you good looking? Um, I don't know. <laughs> 
but uh, he loved Gambit and I loved Rogue, so we bought the stuff. Mm. And then that, there's really nothing more than that's just like we did a, a, a this is my neighborhood, so it's like an HOA, you know, defending yeah. the HOA shot. Nice. <laughs> but, there you go. I mean, I do, I love her. And, it, you know, sometimes I guess it's a good one to say that like cosplay doesn't always have to be about $700 of scaling, you know, armor. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be about, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it really is just loving a character and, and, it doesn't matter if you buy it or whatever. It's still a valid cosplay. Yeah. And I think there's something to be said, too, about just putting a costume on. It, it Like, there's something freeing about it. Like, you can kind of let go of some of your... Uh, at least, like, anytime I've played a character for, like, a skit or something, like, you can kind of become someone else and you can let some of your, like, personal walls down, I guess, for lack of a better way to put right. it. So, well, For sure. That's how I was in wrestling. Like, when I was wrestling. Uh, so, I'm a professional wrestler. Uh, okay. And in so, like, when I'm working as the gimmick name, which is me, Mike, that's how I am all the time. Like, there's myself, Brian, and then there's me, Mike. They're two separate characters completely. And so w- once I put on my gear, that's who's there. It's, Bri- or it's Mike, not Brian. Yeah. Um, right. They kind of blend together. Mike, when I yell at my girls about not cleaning their room or something, they yell back at me and stop <laughs> being mean Mike or tell me Mike to shut up or something like that. But, uh, right. yeah, it, it's definitely freeing doing something like that. Yeah. All right, I think we got two more. Ooh, another good mercy. Uh, the this is the 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 the, the big one right here right now. So <clears throat> this is uh, Warhammer Mercy. It's actually a, a cross between Saint Celestine and Mercy. Um, I came up with the idea um, slowly over uh, some time, really because I I wanted to do a Warhammer build, but I never played Warhammer. I didn't know anything about the lore. I just felt like I couldn't bring authenticity to a straight cannon build because I had no idea what it, what it was about. So I wanted to do a mashup where at least I kind of felt comfortable portraying Mercy because I knew what I was doing. Um, I've become a lore master for, not really, but I mean, I know a lot now because I did my research yeah. uh, for this costume. Yeah. Um, and it's just such a great universe. Uh, I have so much respect for the miniature painters and the people who, who cosplay these characters. Um, so I actually drew a, a version and it looked like a five-year-old like stencil, you know, stick figure. So I actually hired an artist to, to design it. And um, uh, yeah, so I, this one, I want to say it was like, I don't know, I think I'm 800 hours at this point. <laughs> um, she won uh, Supercon. So she, that is a qualifier for the crown championships of cosplay. Um, they just had the New York qualifier. So I was the winner of the Southern um and then new york is the east and then you have emerald city comic con which is the west and then you have c2e2 which is the midwest qualifier uh and next year in march we will all meet in chicago and we will compete to be the u.s champion to go to mcm london for the worlds so i have no idea don't ask me i still have not figured out how i'm going to get that to chicago uh (laughs) but i have a few months to figure it out and redo some stuff um yeah I just, I really loved the aesthetic. I loved how everything came together. I probably, I want to say, goal-wise, want to redo about 60% of this before March. Um, the wings, um, I want to make a move, that kind of stuff. Um, but we'll see how much I actually have time to do. But yeah, she's a, she's a beast. She's hard to wear. She's awkward to wear. She's very clunky. I mean, but there's just so much that went into this. There's that the belts are hand tooled. Um, the hair, the wig is two wigs sliced together. It's about 26 hours of work. So, I mean, there's nothing that you can't like, yeah, there's, there's just a lot on her. So yeah, she's my, my golden goose or what do you call it? I don't know. She's my swan song. There you go. Something. Yeah. There's some. There's some. There's something. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how she goes. All the uh, opus or admin opus. Yeah. Like yeah. My my Mr. Holland's opus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. My, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And that's then... a lot like I look a lot like Richard Dreyfus. No. Uh, <laughs> so, um. This is Tracer from Overwatch, yeah. and this was one of my. F- very early on builds um before maleficent um i want to say the stuff on her the armor pieces on her um are some of the first things i ever made uh and this one went with my son's junk rat which was definitely like our first big family build it was mccree junk rat and tracer and what i learned from this character the most was do not pick characters that you 
don't want to portray all day. <laughs> so Tracer's very perky and spry, and I am not. Like, I don't want to move that much, and I don't like smiling. So I remember there was a point, my friend, she was a uh, widow maker, and she was, she's very derpy, so she was like, doo, 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 doo. and I'm like sitting there like Tracer, I'm like, like, we picked the wrong characters. <laughs> right. Like, this isn't. Uh, yeah, so I, I've gone with definitely more stoic characters from there, you know, Mercy, Maleficent, Shira, uh, Chitara, I'm going to be doing uh, coming up. But yeah, if you don't want to act like that character, don't do it. Um, I think I picked her simply because I thought I could get her done. Like, I thought there was enough armor there that I could actually do it. Yeah. And I, I, I moved away from that, like, that whole mentality. Um, pick the character you want to do don't you know yeah don't try to cut a corner because you're afraid of it just go for it because you're gonna end up spending 150 hours or 200 hours or whatever regardless so you might as well like the character um and i've never even played tracer i have zero hours on her uh in overwatch so yeah yes all right but my butt looked good (laughs) well naturally (laughs) i wasn't gonna say anything but uh, yeah it was uh they photoshopped the the bench out and i was like sitting there and it was very painful and i'm like you got it yet you got it yet you got it yet like shaking yeah it was fun yeah Yeah, mercy's easier you just stand there yeah yeah i was sitting there trying to look at the picture i'm like how did they get this? They, they have something that she was boxed on or something like that for that angle? Yeah. Or were you just there like was a that bench. balanced and like, all right, keep going. <laughs> very, I am very spry, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So before we jump in, I guess one more question real fast that popped in my head. Uh, who is your Overwatch uh, main? Uh, so I was a Mercy main and a Diva main probably starting out the first couple of years. Um, I started to do competitive and I was pretty much Diva exclusively in competitive the first, I want to say, four or five seasons. Um, just because being Mercy is miserable. Um, we were doing like a two-person queue. Um, so like there, it was like, you know, no one wanted to be Ryan Hart. Um, but yeah, so for the most part, I would say the most hours I have are probably Diva and Mercy. But nowadays when I log in and I'm usually by myself, if no one wants to be a shield tank, I go Moira every, all day. Cause I don't want to die. No. I don't want, I'm not going to, I'm not dying for you. I'm not dying <laughs> on that point. I'm not dying on that hill, you know? Um, and it's always like this, I'm sitting there and I'm Mercy and then the person will sit there and they'll be, they'll be Reinhardt. And I'm like, all right. And then all of a sudden, it's like you look over and it's Roadhog, and you're like, okay, well, Moira, <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. Like, get out of here. Um, yeah. So those three were probably the most hours played for me. And uh, after that, just junk, you know, because okay. who doesn't love junk rat? Yeah. Blow that's, stuff up. That's what I was going to say. Like, I, I played many, many hours of Roadhog. I haven't played in about a year, but uh, I was a Reinhardt main myself. Uh, I love just sitting back with the shield protecting everybody. And then complaining about how someone was not watching my back and I died, so we all died. But uh, yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Junk Rat was also like, if there's already a shield main of some kind, it's like, all right, fine, I'll play Junk. Because, you yeah. know, just being able to set up traps and like bounce a explosive off. You have no clue what I'm talking about. No, I actually have not played this game. Yeah, it's it's super fun. But it's fun. Yeah. It's one of those like first person shooters that's actually more uh, tactical on a team aspect than yeah. like Call of Duty, where you're like, I'm going out there. I'm going to kill as many as I can. Uh, and hope my team does similar. Yeah. Like this one, you have to work as a team or you're going to. I mean, I. Yeah, it's my first person shooter that I've ever actually like really played. Yeah. Um, I come from MMOs. So Star Wars, the old Republic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and wow. Um, Wild Star, you know, I city of heroes i was really into that kind of a world so this was the first one that came out where it was like oh this is kind of i know this holy trilogy like or, you know the trinity i know what a healer you know i know this so i yeah. we, my guild kind of got into it and now honestly like i'm so i don't have any time to grind stuff like i logged into wow the other day i was like I but the scene from Lord of the Rings where Gandalf is like, I have no memory of this place. I had no idea where I was. Like right. and I had zero desire to spend forty hours getting to max level. I was like, yeah. uh yeah, I just logged in back into Overwatch. It's like easy, you yeah. know. Yeah. See, see that I can relate to. I I was huge into Destiny for a very long time. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. That, like I was carrying people through raids, like 
uh, you know, do, doing the looking for group LFGs, right? Um, I just knew everything about the first Destiny, like backwards and forwards. The second one for the first few seasons, I was all about it, but it just, I feel like it lost a lot of the steam and a lot of the community didn't like the second one when it came out as well. So like I eventually mm-hmm. fell off and I've tried to log in because I've heard that there's a lot of really good changes that they've made, but no, I don't, I just, I don't have it in me to, <laughs> to grind again. There's just something soul sucking when you're like, and, and wow, does a good job. They'll, they'll give you, you know, free characters, you know, almost to max level. And you're like, oh my God, but I'm still going to have to grind 10 levels. Yeah. <laughs> And and then you got to learn what the new meta is like yeah. for, the, oh, yeah. for the builds and yeah it just is I, my I is a character that I've played for you know six years is it even a viable character anymore you yeah. know whatever it's no it's usually the answer yeah. so yeah that's why I was always yeah. happy with Reinhardt you can almost always get away with Reinhardt even if he's not meta someone will be happy with a Reinhardt yeah. yeah oh that's why Mercy's always great too it's like no one's gonna complain if there's a Mercy on the team right. so you can't go wrong all right uh, another question. Yeah, let's uh, get back to a few questions here. Um, okay, so I guess with all your experiences with cosplay, what would be some of, I guess, your most memorable moments or any meaningful experiences that you've had? Uh, so I would say the most memorable moment I've had would probably be uh, uh, winning on stage at uh, Supercon uh, with Mercy. So um, Mercy w- was a a build that I actually originally did for the ultimate online cosplay contest. And it wasn't picked as a top 15 um, finalist in armor, which is, I mean, the people who were, you know, it was an international contest of all the best cosplayers in the world. So, I mean, there's no, there's no shame in not being one of the top 15, but you know, after 800 hours, it was pretty heartbreaking. Um, And I remember going, all right, well, I'm just going to enter it into the next contest or just into like, you know, whatever. Um, and whenever the real, the real world happens again, you know, so I entered it into Supercon and I didn't, I just remember looking over at the, this giant Gundam and I was like, oh, maybe I, uh, maybe I'll get th- the third would be good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this giant Gundam. It was like cell shaded to perfection. And I was just like, this isn't, this isn't happening. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't do the competitions to compete with other people. I don't go in going, I want to win. I'm just competing with myself, you know? Um, and it was an honor just to have made it to a, a contest like the champ- crown championships of cosplay that I, you know, I, I, I respect so much the people who have won and the people who are involved in that contest. And then when they announced my name, I ugly cried for 20 minutes on stage, <laughs> literally like just bawling. Like, and I, I think I didn't think it was that bad, but watching the replay, like I'm literally just like Kardashian crying, like somebody, you know, stole my suit and it was just like crying. Um, but it, it was probably the most memorable for sure. It, it means a lot. Um, there's something, you know, I don't look for validation I, a lot. I try to not get involved in that, like how many yeah. likes, how many followers, BS. But there is something validating when the peers that you respect go you're you're one of us you know um you can you can roll with us you can sit here you know um there was something a little bit you know validating about that so um yeah that would probably be number one for sure right on awesome um so got a question for you on this david or abra i avera avera sorry (laughs) my brain Uh, just totally spaced on everything uh, (laughs) um in the cosplay uh world uh people got a lot better with this over the years but uh, what would you do? What would you tell somebody coming into the cosplay world about um, body image and possible body shaming that people might do that you have to worry about? I uh, yeah, I mean, I think it goes. It's swung so far the other way almost, where I say things too sometimes like I would never do that cosplay because I don't feel comfortable in it, and you get what do you mean? And you're like, I'm forty. I don't look good. I don't, I, I think here's the, the, the bottom line. If you feel good and you feel confident, there's nothing else to say. Um, and people will be jerks, especially, you know, you know, you're, you're getting good when people start to make mean comments because that's just kind of the way it is, right? You're, you're opening yourself out up and you're putting yourself out there and it takes a lot to put yourself out there. Um, but it takes nothing for Ted, who's just trolling Instagram on the toilet, to go, 
you look like Rita Repulsa, not Maleficent, because you're fat. And you're like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a, I don't know. Rita Repulsa is kind of cool, too. Right? Um, you know, I, I know that I'm a lot older than most of the girls we're going to be getting into cosplay. Um, I've been through a lot more. And that's just something that kind of comes with the territory where it's easier to brush off. And so I think I'm, I'm definitely a little bit more fearful for you know, or, or a little bit more kind of like mom-ish about the girls who are, you know, I remember what it was like to be 16 and you put yourself out there and all of a sudden someone steps on you and you're, you're devastated. You can't help that. That's just kind of the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, but again, going back to the validation point is if you're doing this for the right reasons, if you're doing this because you love this character, you love this fandom, you love cosplaying, you're starting to get into the community, you're starting to enjoy it. If you're if those are the real reasons you're doing it and you're not doing it for validation, you're not doing it for followers or likes or, you know, to kind of become famous or whatever, um, you're going to be okay because the fandom will wrap itself around you. It's going to protect you, number one. Number two, you know you're doing it for the right reasons. So it's a lot, becomes a lot easier to say, well, I don't care what they think. I don't care what they think. And yeah. people will step up for you. They will stick up for you. If you're on a post and someone says, this is gross because you're a size 12 instead of a size two, I can guarantee you some con moms are going to be like, well, yeah, well, you know, they'll step, they'll step up for you, um, stick up for you. Um, but yeah, just make sure, you know, it's okay that it hurts, but it shouldn't be devastating because you should know that you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, yeah and not looking for validating validation from ted on the toilet who <laughs> you know he's just a jerk he's 16 he's probably like got a lot of issues at home probably lost a comp match in overwatch the other night because his reinhardt switched to roadhog right it's got a lot of problems <laughs> yeah it, it's it's <laughs> what's what's funny yeah. uh while you were saying that i couldn't help but think i'm sure we've all heard the story of three billy goats gruff right like, isn't that kind of actually like when you're talking about that, I was like, that's actually kind of a life metaphor. Like when you want to go try something new, go somewhere new, go experience something new. There's always a troll that's going to jump in front of you and, and test you. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, well, for sure. Don't let the trolls get in your head. Don't feed the troll. Yeah. 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 It's fine. They're there. Yeah, they exist. Sure. But just move on. They're not going to go away either. You know, I mean, they're, they're just they're not. Um. And, you know, I think the thing that always bothers me the most isn't the, I don't get, I don't get done reading something about my weight and then go, I look in the mirror and go, <laughs> you know, I'm fat. It's like, I know, eh, whatever. Uh, this is what you get. This is the best I can do. Um, but what bothers me the most is that you didn't see the costume. Like, really? You didn't see all that work? You just saw the fact that I'm a size 12. That's awesome. Thanks. You know, yeah. I think the invisibility of my work some, is what actually pisses me off when people do that. Not necessarily, you know, uh, worrying about my body image or, or you know, getting you know yeah. down on myself. It's more like, really? Like, that's not what I'm here for. So, you know, people are just they just love to make other people feel like crap because they don't like who they are. Yeah. And you just have to learn how to deal with that. You know, well, especially when you've put, put hundreds of hours into, into the craft. Right. And then for someone to just completely yeah. miss it, like, I don't, I'm sure you, you've pro you probably know who evil Ted is, right? He does a lot of, uh, oh, builds yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, I remember watching him trying to find inspiration to do a, a destiny build, which I still one day I'm going to do, but, uh, <laughs> I believe in you. But, but the fact that like, I've, I've tried to like make those steps, like, it is a lot of work. There's a lot of detail. And I've seen some of your videos where you were like doing the scales on like the armor. And I was like, that is, there's so much going on there. If you haven't like put any thought into that, like it's very easily missed. Oh yeah. Um, especially by the yeah. trolls. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, they don't care. Yeah. I, I had a friend. What do you want to say? You're too old to be mercy. And I was like, really fun fact. Mercy's 39. Yep. I'm 41. <laughs> like, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shut up. Come on. Give me a little bit here. It's closer on a scale than 19. Right? Okay. It's not like you're, you know, the, someone's like, oh, you're too old to play Diva. It's like, all right. Yeah. But, but I don't care. I'm doing Diva anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I know. I had a friend, uh, she did a, uh, a Iron Man, uh, Sailor Moon crossover cosplay. Oh, nice. And uh, she asked me to uh, make her a um, uh, arc reactor. 
that lights up and everything. So uh, I put like 30 hours into it, making it for her. And uh, everything that people were talking about was her look and nothing about the actor reactor. And I'm like, oh, I feel bad. Because like, I put a ton of time to that. <laughs> and they, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you look like great like Sailor Moon, but it's kind of dumb being Iron Man. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah, pe- people just don't. I, they don't. They don't. I think it's what killed me too from doing cosplay. Like I've been going to cos- yeah. cons for years, but like I think that's what killed me for doing cosplay until uh, we did that photo shoot. Uh, yeah, you and I. And I'm like, you know what? I like damn good as Indiana Jones. I'm gonna freaking do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. What's up? Are you just woken up? Are you going downstairs? All right. We're we're. Okay, we're in the we're we're still on this thing. Do you want to say hi? No. All right. <laughs> bye bye. I don't know. Sorry. Oh, you're, you're fine. Good. We had a baby wanting to see what was going on here. Perfectly fine. I'm I'm 100 percent down with football fans. So my my little three year old has run in on us recording on more than one occasion. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Did the dolphins win? Depends on whether or not I want to come down. <laughs> <soon>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about going home. For, like I don't want to go home if the Eagles didn't win. My wife might kill me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eagles fans. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm a Niners fan. My wife's an Eagles fan. Oh. My daughter, my youngest daughter's oh, an Eagles fun. fan. My oldest daughter is a Vikings, Cowboys, Dolphins fan. Oh, nice. I know, right? <laughs> she's hedging her bets. Yeah. One of these teams has got to win today. So. Well, she's decided she's picked Maybe. all these teams because uh, the Vikings... Uh, she picked initially when she was four because they're purple, and purple is her favorite color. Um, and then the Dolphins is uh, her cousin's a Dolphins fan, so she wanted to do that. And then she picked the Cowboys to do nothing but troll my wife, uh, who's an Eagles fan. So, <laughs> That's, I respect that choice a lot, right? actually. I actually do. She's off on the right foot. Right. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, what? Well, uh, unless you have any other questions, let's go ahead and move to the mini debate. Um. Uh, actually, yeah, Let, let's do because this was kind of a fun question. So, okay. uh, so if if you could pick any superpower, what would it be? But the caveat is, uh, this is going to be open for the fans. Fans, you get to decide what the weakness is, and then we will read some of your comments yeah. in upcoming episodes. So, uh, what would your superpower be? Uh, so I would say. And I don't know how the weakness one. I might get screwed here. <laughs> uh, but powers of persuasion would be mine. So the power of suggestion, mm. very similar to I would say. I used to say there's like an off. There's a character in one of the best movies of all time, Wolverine <laughs> Origins. Oh boy, <laughs> where she can put. I forgot. Psyche is her name, or she could push the thought yeah. into you know them. I guess a better one is the rumor chick on um, uh, Umbrella Academy. The Umbrella Academy, yeah, something similar to that, where you can just make whatever you want. Yeah, you can just persuade people to do whatever you want. Um, yeah, I mean, I know the downside is like if you you know you don't want to do it to like people you love. It's like here, my ice cream's free, not like love me. You know, yeah, yeah. so I think that that, but that's your own morality, and I know where I would stand. So. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd be pretty good with that, but I would like free ice cream forever. Yeah. Um, I would definitely be famous for sure. Right. Like I'd totally be like, I'm just going to cosplay all day. Send me money. Like I'd be yeah. like a cosplay televangelist. It's <laughs> 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 really evil. Actually, maybe I don't know where my morality yeah. lies. You're quickly turning into. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. I feel like you're quickly turning into. Who is it? Uh, kill. kill- Kilgrave, right? From uh, Jessica yeah, Jones? Yeah, Kil- Kilgrave. Yeah. I'm really turning evil, aren't I? That's all right. You know what? I'll be gray. How about that? I'll just go. be gray. There you go. Uh, so that's the one I always thought would be cool. Um, flying, whatever. I mean, that yeah. doesn't seem like a lot of fun. <laughs> seems like a lot of fun. Uh, invisibility. Hollow Man. I've seen way too many of those. Yeah. Invis- invisibility is not fun. It always gets rapey. Um <laughs> always it does it's like every bad. version of invisible <laughs> yeah. man hollow man all of those invisible movies it's always like especially with the guy who's doing the invisible thing yeah always yeah. it's he, I, I was watching the newest one that came out i don't remember which one it was and i was like this this might be different than kevin nope oh, exactly the same rapey yeah yeah, yeah same <laughs> always <laughs> yeah. all right so. so fans 
tell us what the weakness should be for that. Um, but let's go ahead and, yeah, let's get into our, our topic for discussion for the day. So we're just kind of coming out of the Halloween season. Uh, so we want to just go back into that for just one more episode. And we want to ask the question, who is the best Scream Queen? Yep. Uh, now, of course, there's tons of choices that we can choose from. Um, just a couple to throw out there right now, of course, is Nev Campbell from Scream. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis from all of the horror movies she's in. <laughs> so uh, many. Heather Langenkab from the Nightmare on uh, Elm Street series. So, uh, Avera, what would you think is, or who do you think is the best script screen? Okay. So, I- I've never necessarily been a big gore kind of a, a fish like fan. I like more like event horizon and like requiem for a dream like those are like i like more like mental kind of stuff but i would say if i had to pick one my favorite uh just from childhood i would go with patricia Ar- patricia arquette because of dream warriors was probably my favorite freddy krueger movie yeah um as a kid um and yeah and she's she does a really good job in that movie, and, and that one I could watch over and over again. So it's a very good choice. Although I was really young, I don't know why my parents let me watch that, but yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> they did that, it right. <laughs> well, that was the first one I watched, so the Nightmare uh, yeah. on th- or uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series. Um, yeah, I, I, it's funny because you bring that one up because I literally just got telling these guys before you hopped on with us of a randomness of knowledge that I know is uh, in the fourth movie. Uh, they replaced uh, her character, Kristen. Uh, with another actress who was a uh, a singer who actually did the opening theme song for the uh, fourth movie. Name was uh, Tuesday Night. Huh. Just random bit of knowledge I knew off the top of my head. Which, if anybody knows me, that's how I know all of my knowledge is off the top of my head. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I just yeah, I remember that movie. I remember you know that one. I guess you know anything beyond that is yeah i don't know scary terry's pretty good right he screams uh, no yeah so i I, again (laughs) yeah um i mean you gotta go with you gotta give props to jamie lee curtis though it was just for um you know i think she come never comes across weak i think that's one of the things that i really like about her characters um is that she never comes off like a victim um i think nev campbell a lot of times just has the word victim written across her forehead and it, and yeah. i don't know if it's her face but she looks like she's about to cry and and i don't necessarily you know i gravitate more towards you know the strength where it's like yes this is all happening to me and i don't like it and i'm scared but I'm going to fight back, you know, yeah. as much as I can. Um, so, I mean, I will, I guess the one thing that you got to give Nev credit for is the fact that she's carried an entire franchise, like mo- most horror franchises, ma- the leads end up dying at some point within the first mm-hmm. one or two films, but she's carried the entire franchise. I guess, well, there's the TV series, but we don't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> I never saw so, that. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad either. It, it it exists. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so I guess to her credit, she's she's managed to carry the franchise, and and it's a franchise that uh, the movies have all been interesting. They've they've all been very clever critiques yeah. on on horror. Well, I guess slashers as a genre. Yeah. Um. So I guess you know I, I have to give her credit for that, and I think she was she's definitely one of my tops for that. But I definitely can see your point though as well that you know she does come off very victimy. I don't know if that's her as much as the writing though right yeah you can't yeah. It, it's hard to say i i don't for me i like nev campbell i've liked her in a bunch of different things she's in and i love screen that was like one of my favorite ones from the 90s but it, you get to a point when you're playing it, like a character like sydney prescott and there's now going to be a fifth movie dealing yeah. with her being attacked that you have to think to yourself like you have multiple bad relationships. It's probably going to be your fault that there are so many <laughs> yeah. bad. This is the same thing. Yeah. Like, you have so many people trying to kill you. There might be a problem with you. Yeah. Um, right. there, there's only one consistent factor at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at like Jamie Lee Curtis in like Halloween or in like uh, prom night or any of the other movies she's in, it's like, uh, especially in Halloween where it's multiple ep- or ones with her in it. It's always the same guy trying to kill her. Like there's an understanding of why he's trying to do it. Where in like Scream, there's multiple people trying to kill you, and usually it's two people every movie trying to kill you. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, there's a problem with you. Uh. But <laughs> like with Heather Langenkamp, uh, I think she has a mix of both that's so well. Uh. For those who don't know, Heather Langenkamp played Nancy in um the 
Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Um, so in the first and third movie, and then of course the new Nightmare, and in all of them, she starts off so somewhat victimy, but she kind of grows as a character through those movies, uh, especially yeah. in the first movie, and then into yeah. the second or the her second appearance in the third movie, where she's kind of now like the elder statesman when it comes to dealing with Freddy Krueger, and then uh in the new Nightmare, she's like an Uber mom trying to save her kid while taking on mm-hmm. this character that she. Well, she's playing herself. Yeah, know, she's like, playing herself, like a, a fictionalized version of herself for trying to protect her kid. Yeah. Like, Meta she, before that was even a thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, she was amazing as an actress in all those movies. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is great in what she's done, and I like what they're doing with the new movies now uh, for Halloween, Halloween Kills, and uh, Halloween Ends. But, uh, yeah, I just, I think Heather Langenkamp probably is my favorite of the Scream Queens. But, yeah. I, she I does. Think- she has like an innocence without being victimy. I think that there's yeah. not like she's not victimy. She just has no idea what's going on, right? Like there's an innocence, and you can watch that get eroded away, which is nice. Whereas and I'm sorry to bust on your Nev, but she kind of has like a Bella, you know, like almost like a, a Twilight kind of emo vibe, you know, where it's like, okay, get over it, like seriously, like like get your shit together, put it in a bag. Get it together, like yeah. stop, you know. Um, but yeah, pick yourself maybe, up, brush yourself off. <laughs> like I'm picking on your girl, so I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, with all that being said, guys, why don't you tell us here in the comments what you think uh, between the choices we've given you so far, or somebody else that we didn't mention? Who is the best scream queen? Uh, hit us out in the comments, and on the next episode, we will read them out. Yeah, exactly. Um, thanks again so much for joining us, Avera. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. Yeah. Super fun. Awesome. <laughs> I am talking about myself. It's like my favorite. <laughs> I got my logo on. It's like my favorite thing to talk about. I uh, love me. So that, I mean, that alone is an important lesson everyone should needs yeah. to learn, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always like, you know, the cosplayers are like, can I get your picture? And it's like, has anyone told you no today? Like, I didn't dress like this to not have you come take my picture like of course and i also want to talk about my costume and i also will give you my my card and here's my instagram and come talk to me anytime you want so all right yeah yeah. yeah. (laughs) no but that is true uh if anybody is trying to get into cosplay i am very good about like answering my instagrams or messages dm me ask me a question it has to be specific like how do you make things out of foam is a little too general i'll probably give you links and point you in the right direction to get you started um but for like if you want to ha- if you have a question or you're trying to do something and you don't know where to start and looking for sourcing materials i'm always available and, and I'm, I'm pretty good about getting back to people so yeah feel definitely. free to reach out uh on that note avera why don't you uh, throw out your social medias and however we can find you one more time yeah. awesome so it's avera underscore cosplay on both tiktok and instagram you can also find me as avera cosplay on twitter and facebook if you're on there uh, I don't have a lot of content on there. It's usually recycled, um, but TikTok and Instagram are probably the bigger ones. I also stream on Twitch Creative uh, during the afternoons, and I do a lot of tutorials on there as well. So. Awesome. awesome. And we will have all those links in the uh, the show notes and descriptions and everything. So. Yep, definitely. Yeah. All yeah. right, guys. Good luck. Hope the Eagles win so that you don't <laughs> so you can go home. I, I mean, if they win, they win. If they don't, my wife will be drunk. But uh, – <laughs> I hope my Niners win. That's all I care about. So. Right. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Thank you again for having me. You too, yeah. guys. All right. All right. Uh, and guys, as always, fight, fight on. on.